at the older version, if you were to plan a flight mission, let's say you want to do a mapping job, you would tap on flight route, either create a route or uh, import from uh, using KMZ file. But uh, let's just say we create a route, we tap on mapping, right? And then uh, we would choose, let's say, I'm just going to choose somewhere random. Alright, so let's just tap here. So first thing you notice is a square would appear. Alright, and uh, there will be some default settings that would appear on the right. So you will change the name, right? Select camera. So let's take uh, anything uh, like uh, an L1. And let's say we're doing LiDAR mapping. So first thing you will see is the GSD is fixed, right? With the point cloud density also fixed because it is relative to your uh, flight height, right? So if I were to increase the flight route, you will see the GSD increase. If I were to subtract, it would increase, right? So you would have better resolution the lower you fly, right? Now, um, you will also have the option to do terrain follow. So what you do is just check that option, select your DSM file. If you don't have one available, you can uh, download that from your uh, your PC. So let's say you have uh, some kind of online database or if you've flown there before, you can take the DSM from there and uh, put it into the software. Otherwise, uh, what you can do is you can download from internet. So in this case, let's download from the internet. Okay, right. Once it's downloaded, a good sign would be the lines will be multicolored, and that is a sign that uh, you know it's doing a terrain follow. So let's say your terrain follow height you want to do it 120 meters. You would have a GSD of 3.27 centimeters per pixel, point cloud density of 118 points per square meter, takeoff speed and flight speed course angle. If you turn on elevation optimization, you have one extra line. And then of course, um, let's just say we set our overlaps to 50, right? Payload settings, we will set here. And there you go. That will be your flight mission once you save. And if you go back out, you would see your mission here and you would select that for your uh, flight. Let's look at how it's changed. Now we start with um, flight route, same thing. But what you see here immediately is um, a bunch of um, jobs. And this job, now it's assuming that this app is general enough that you would support all sorts of um, aircraft models and types. So if you tap, you know, the job types, you can sort it by aircraft type as well. So in, I'm assuming the same remote, um, which I assume this version would be on the uh, RC Plus later, meaning you would be able to use it for M300 or M30 series. Right? So you can sort by the type of payloads that you would have. Okay, so where the biggest difference is now, if you want to add a job, you go to the upper right hand side, tap on plus, there you'll find the option to create or to import the routes. So let's create. And um, area routes are treated the same, whether you're doing an oblique mission or you're doing a uh, traditional uh, auto map. Right? So your 2D, 3D data collection is treated the same. So let's just select. So it goes to the same uh, kind of thing. The other thing you notice is on the upper right hand side, you immediately start to see the area of um, that you are, the size of area that you're going to cover. Okay, and let's take uh, this place. And internet's working. Okay, a moment. All right. And this time, to create a mapping area, you would have to tap. 
manually the area. There's no automatic generation of a box. Okay. Now you notice once I've tapped this, there are no settings for me yet. So what you have to do is to check here. Yeah? Select the aircraft type. So in this case, let's take uh, M5 or M300. Also with an L1. Um, let's do LiDAR mapping. And then immediately we start doing payload settings. So let's go triple, right? 160, non repetitive. Okay. Then comes the flight mission planning. Now, a few things you notice immediately the um, it's optimized where the angle of the road is uh, according to the longest sides, right? So if you notice, we have four sides here, and the biggest number is 2657. So the flight mission is oriented along this area, okay? So if you want to go change the settings of uh, your LiDAR sensor, you would tap here, right, the arrow, okay, where it says LiDAR mapping. And you can then change your type of job. So whether it's auto, which means your 2D, or oblique, which is your 3D. Right? The other thing is now you can work uh, forwards and backwards. So if you saw the older version earlier, uh, what you would have is you would set the altitude and then uh, you would get the GSD. Then you would adjust the altitude to have the desired GSD that you would want. Um, in this case, you can work both ways. So you can set a GSD of let's say 3.27 and you will get exactly 120 meters. Uh, inversely, you could actually just key in let's say 100 meters and you would have a GSD of 2.73 centimeters per pixel. So you can work uh, from a GSD point of view or from an altitude point of view. So let's take 120 meters right, to match earlier. And uh, the rest are the same. So your safe takeoff altitude setting, time new calibration, uh, speed. So um, speed here is your mission speed. So if you were to set 10. Now the mission, the safe takeoff, uh, uh, sorry, the setting for Takeoff speed, which is the speed which you would go to the work area, that is set. Sorry, not here. Yeah, sorry. So uh, previously you would have the takeoff speed and the mission speed. So speed by the 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 one that says speed alone. That one um, determines the speed it will fly uh, when working. So if you look at the old version, there will be two speeds. One is takeoff speed and one just is speed. Takeoff speed is a speed which the drone will fly to the area of work. Okay, so if you have an area that's let's say 500 meters away and you want to get there quickly, you can have the takeoff speed higher than the working speed. So let's say if you take off and then you want it to go to the work area at 15 meters a second, you can set that, but you can still set a working speed of 10 meters per second, which is just speed, and then it will work at 10 meters a second. So you can optimize for things like that. Now in this new version, where you would change it is you will go to advanced settings and it'll be right at the bottom. Bit about that later. So you can see the options are still here. It says that they've re they've shuffled all the positions to try and um, have a more sensible flow. Right? So first you would have the standard options that you would want to pay attention to. But uh, of course those that are slightly less um, important where if you would leave them at default it will still work are hidden here in advanced settings. So in advanced settings, you would have the target surface takeoff point that would be your offset. 
from your takeoff point to the actual working altitude. You would have a side overlap setting. So if I were to set that to 50%, right, you will still see your side overlap. You would have your forward overlap, which is the same as before. And then your margin settings, right? Photo mode is still there. Custom app camera angle is new. So uh, assuming you were working with uh, a job within an area where Yes, you want to generate an auto map, but it requires you to tilt the camera at a certain angle. For example, if you have uh, reflective surfaces, uh, say solar panels, so you would have the camera tilted at a certain angle to avoid the glare from the sun. Okay, so you would check this and then set the camera angle. The next thing you'll be able to change is the start point. So before this, um, it would take a, an arbitrary point, uh, usually one uh, that is on the upper left hand corner or uh, one that is nearest to where you were at the time to start your mission and then um, you go there. Now you can actually set it to any point, right? Or you can set it to here, let's say, any corner. And that will be your start point. You can set it to the nearest, um, what you would call it, the um, edge, right? They would allow you to highlight. Okay, and your start point will be close to there. Now, the one thing you notice that's missing is you can't do terrain follow. That's because the Altitude is set relative to takeoff point. Right? So how you do terrain follow is to first hit the select the kind of altitude and change it to AGL. Okay. So now that you have the above ground level, then uh, you would then want to know what is ground. So you would have to select the DSM file. And the same, you can either select from your uh, list of already downloaded files, or you can just download from the internet. Um, there you go. And once you're done, you can save it and you can launch it as before. Now what is nice is um, immediately you have the information. Um, most of the relevant information already displayed here, which means the area covered, what is the GSD, estimated time completion, and number of photos. If you expand that a little bit more, uh, you would have some extra information like distance. And if you tap on the pen, then you can start editing or you can launch. So I hope this makes the transition to the newer version smoother uh, as usual. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment below uh, or send us an email. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you and fly safe.